Good evening, all. I'm Rapstein of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up, and this is for Tuesday. And we are now sitting here at the 20, what is this, the 27th of April, 2021, just after 7:30 at night. So tomorrow you have to go in and figure out what do you want to do if you're a shorter term trader. You're going to have the FOMC statement at 1 o'clock central time. Then you get the press conference at 1.30. We have President Biden speaking uh, in the evening. He's already dropped the estate tax proposal. So he's removed that. He thinks he's better off trying to get the, um, the raise in the regular rates up to 39.6 and for the uh, uh, capital gains to 39.6. I'll go on record, he's got no chance of 39.6 on capital gains. I don't think it sits well in the Democrats or the Republican Party. Could there be movement on it from where it's at? Of course there can be. Do I think it'll end up with a three in front of it? No, but that's me. As for the top tier of regular income tax? I don't know. People are so rich at that tier, and if they're really paying that thick of the wealth they have, does it matter if it's one and a half percent points? That'll be a hard pill to get people to fight about for them. The other part, the capital gains, I'm solidly not in the camp that believes that'll pass. All right. That takes us to Thursday when we get GDP numbers. So the question is, how do you want to handle interest rate movements? Because what we've had going into this is a lot of time where between the last FOMC meeting and now, we've seen interest rates actually drop. They've retraced. And now the question is, are they ready after this one to start moving slightly forward again? I, I, I can't tell you that the charts are saying yes to it yet, but they're getting to the point where they're saying maybe the rally, in fact, they are saying the rally has at a minimum stalled on getting interest rates to drop. In other words, when the futures market rallies, interest rates are falling. And now is the market starting to turn and want to add something back there. Obviously, a big player for tomorrow night in the speech with uh, President Biden is PAVE, and you can see the chart still looks good. It's got higher and lows, higher highs. I brought this on many months ago because I, I started telling you, I had somebody write me and said, don't you think the play's over? And that was over here. I said, I think it's just getting going. Uh, and that's not a trade recommendation, but once I saw that uh, the Biden uh, administration was going to take over the presidency, what do you think I'm looking at? I'm looking at infrastructure that everybody wants. The definition is what's infrastructure. That's what they're fighting about. There's, no, there's not fighting about doing roads and all that. Their question is how to get to that point. And what is infrastructure? Is it internet? I can go on and on as to what it is, isn't pipes, electricity. There's so much to talk about. Higher lows, higher highs. Okay, that's bullish on the market. Support the 18-day average. We've been seeing that. I think the market's got a problem right here. You're at an upper Bollinger Band. But, and the word is but, got to always be careful. When a president speaks, and he's, I think he's going to talk infrastructure, that could be like a jet engine under it. You know, you got to be looking to see what happens here. Uh, certainly, there's no reason to be short at a minimum that I'm seeing on the chart. You are overbought. That's a reason maybe that the pros taking money off at the upper Bollinger Band. If you haven't taken my Bollinger Band course, which is different than just learning Bollinger Bands, at the end of this video I talk about it. Uh, there's an ad there for it and it tells you how to get in and learn more. Learn. Bollinger Bands, slow stochastics, big time events. GameStop, you know, they, let me get back to that. They successfully did more stock offering and they got their till nicely full of money here. The question is, can they do anything? That's gonna be the big thing. Do they have the money to do it? No question. Do they have the people behind that have done before with Ryan and so on? They absolutely do. Get, they gotta get it done at some point. And at some point, I'm just gonna turn that off because it's not as volatile as it was. Uh, the semiconductors, you can see, straight up move. They're still a monster shortage. And, you know, I keep hearing in the auto industry, because, you know, I read like a madman as to what that shortage is. It's hurting productivity, no question about it. Uh, the semiconductor index, the SMH, lower highs, lower lows. The battleground's the 18-day average. To negate this break we had, you got to get over 5392, but there's nothing yet on that chart in a pattern that says go out and buy me, I'm in a bull market. Podex, 
fighting right where it should, the 18-day average. So it came from the Bollinger Band back here. It stepped out of a downtrend. It lost the embedded reading. You can see this right through here. When you lose it, you're looking for prices to go back to the 18-day average of closes. You're over 20. Now you're more even over 20. You're looking for that 18-day average. Thank you. You know, it's just like a classroom. I, you know, it's like fake quotes, but they're not fake. This is exactly what I teach should be happening in the market. And now you rang a bell and it's like, what do we do next? And that's the question. You've negated the downtrend, you haven't begun an uptrend, and you hit a target on the upside that is totally neutral. ESGU. So we're trying to embed again. So both numbers were over 80, as you can see uh, today. That's Tuesday. Were they that way? Uh, Yesterday, Monday, they were. And what about the day before? They were. So you're fully embedded again. That tells me that on the breaks, I expect to see the pros buying. I say they bail when you get a reading under 79. And prior to that, they want to buy between there down to here. That's what I'm expecting to see. In the energies, I was looking for the rally back to the 18-day average. And actually what the market did is you got to close today at 48.44 over that number. So in theory, you've got now bias up because you're over the 18-day average. The swing line is up, the trend is up, and momentum is up. I hate this narrow band. If you're a buyer, you know, you probably have to have a stop under the most recent low of 46.87. I wouldn't look for more than the upper Bollinger Band around 49.95 on this, but uh, it turned itself. SPY. You can see how it's trying to come up here now, too, and embed. Again, you've got the president. I'll stick my neck out, hit that upper Bollinger Band, big resistance area. Trend up since you have been embedded. You did lose it. And when you lost it, it took me and my subscribers that I talked to out of the game. It definitely came back. Okay. But I don't think they missed that much on this. And they wait. Uh, they certainly, during that embedded time, were doing just fine. When we get to the emerging market ETF, you're overbought, sitting, and I think you're going to stay within that Bollinger Band until we see a bit more action. There's so much to be answered this week between the Fed, the GDP number, the President's speech. There's a lot. Gold lost its embedded reading. You can see that right through here. This was uh, Monday. And it's continuing. I would not be surprised. It cannot re-embed here. So I've got a target of the 18-day average of closes. There's all kinds of reasons the way that I teach charting to be out of longs. No reason to be short to be out of longs. Uh, gold miners, same thing. When you lose that momentum, this was fine up until here. This is still good. But once you lose that reading, bang, bang, goodbye. Uh, you, you know, you'll say, oh, it's going there, and I'm saying, I think it's going to try to make a run for the 18-day average. And that seems to be what the market is doing, just because of the lost momentum. TLT, I'm questioning now, is this market ready to roll to the downside? Why? If you think about when we had the last FOMC meeting, <laughs> and we've had that neat rally since then, and the market has gotten comfortable, we have the same FOMC, and I don't think they're going to say anything different. Where the difference is going to come in is the GDP number on Thursday. So I think the markets are looking to see, does the Fed give them an idea? Let me tell you what the Fed told all of us. They didn't call me up and say this to me. They will taper the bond buying before they raise interest rates. That's all you got to look for. That's it. <laughs> Period. Once you hear that, they're not telling us how many months will go by between then. They've given you the secret. You know how few people are paying attention to that? That's what they're going to do. I, I believe the Fed. I think their credibility is always there. They tell you what they're going to do before they do it. They prep you. They haven't done it. Okay. But the market's looking to see, are they getting closer in the wording tomorrow to doing that tapering? That's what I think the market's looking at. FXE, still embedded, 
still bullish, you've stalled. Just a flip-flop of the dollar index. You're stalling here at the 100-day average of resistance, and on the dollar index, you're stalling on the downside and the futures at the support of the 100-day average. So you put it together, and that's the game plan that you have. So again, take a look at this if you want to learn something. Inexpensive to do it. I predict that if you take this, you will look at Bollinger Bands in a way you've not looked at them in the past. I'm Ira. Have a great day.